Tim, please, Tim. Oh. I haven't got the mic in front of me. Oh, God. Should I start again? Well, too late to start now. Anyway, there's the volume, so sorry about that. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, I can tell. Um, okay, somebody asked an interesting question. They said, uh, thank you. Thank you, Reg, volume low. Where do you sleep if fully booked up hammock? You seem to be living like Crocodile Dundee, says John Swift. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got uh, two beach houses which are currently being rented out. They were fully booked for February and uh, March is looking pretty good as well. I've got a third property which has my residence. It will be my forever residence and it's got an apartment behind it which um, we're also renovating which will be the third beach house and uh, that's a single bedroom beach house which will be uh, about 90 metres from the beach. 80 metres? About 80 metres from the beach. Uh, so I uh, thank you for all those people that reminded me about the volume that's now been fixed. Uh, uh, thank you. Confucius says, Confucius also had another strange question. Um, uh, Confucius says, he's not reading the comments about volume. And Confucius had a very strange uh, question a bit earlier. He said, what is this channel? Well, it's an adult porn channel, uh, Confucius says. Um, it's an adult uh, porn channel, but we feature every, all the uh, actors are all over 80 years old. So stick around for the next hour because it might get really interesting. Uh, just had heavy rain in Bangkok, says Bob M. Hopefully uh, help to clear away the pollution. And good morning from a bright and clear Buriram, says John Swift. Hopefully not too hot today. Cheers from Canada from Thomas. Hey from Las Vegas, Arnold Ziffel. And uh, we've got David in the Smoky North, David Hodgson. So plenty of people online. Great to have you with us. Sorry about the muck up with the volume earlier. A lot of things to think about and a very, very busy weekend for me uh, and we've got uh, chilled out on Lantau. Hi from Hua Hin. So people from all over the place. Let's get into some of the uh, the main comments. Might just give you a quick look where I am this morning and we uh, we start with how do we do this? We go click. There we go. So this is the road uh, about an hour ago. As you can see peak hour traffic very 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 busy looking out from uh, where I'm sitting here at the cafe. That looks across the uh, the foreshore coastal area. No buildings on that for about 10 kilometers. Andaman Sea beyond and uh, that is roughly where I am at Chip Fair Le A closer look at that as we walk towards the building and uh, just a couple of cyclists there just arrived when I was filming this and uh, this is Chip Fair Le A where you can get a good coffee and you can get a sort of a semi-American or Farang style breakfast as well as plenty of great Thai food as well and that's where I am actually sitting at the moment uh, and uh, a couple of people greeting me here this morning that's Bu. hey Bu. hey I'm here stop with the laundry and uh, one of the local soy dogs saying hello and if I'm over the road the foreshore has got a lot of these Cassiarina trees which have obviously been here for quite a long time and uh, they populate a lot of the foreshore a couple of the soy dogs coming to help me do the filming and uh, also a few um, sort of ficus trees I suppose you'd call them that uh, come and populate the area as well but a uh, really nice foreshore for uh, strolling along uh, that's a photo from last night at the sunset looking directly over the road from where I'm now living and we get these beautiful sunsets uh, there you are every single night of the year uh, people go down to for example in Phuket to a place called Cape Promtep which is the very very southern point of the island of Phuket and it's a nice enough promontory and there's a shrines down there and on any night of the year particularly high season you'll get hundreds of buses mostly with Chinese tourists descending on this one place to watch the sunset and the thing is you can see exactly the same sunset from uh, well anywhere along the foreshore of the Andaman Sea, including exactly where I was with approximately, I don't know, about 10 people. 
So uh, very lucky to uh, to enjoy the. Uh, what happened to the comments? Here we go. Uh, I saw your beach houses on Steve's channel. Nice, says Ted. Thank you very much. By the way. Thank you to Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinepuket.com and also thank you to uh, the beach houses who sort of vaguely sponsor the program. There's a link in the description to the Airbnb links if you do want to see some photos uh, of those particular beach houses. Scooter McGee says, I keep hearing about how slow it is here in touristy parts of Thailand. Well, I don't know what you're talking about there, uh, but I was on Second Road in Pattaya Friday night and you couldn't squeeze one more car or scooter on the road. I can't imagine it being busier. I have to say exactly the same about Phuket. Uh, both the arrival numbers during January and February and just driving anywhere around the island would suggest to you that uh, Phuket's numbers are, if not very close to, they're, I think, exceeding the tourist arrivals on the island back in 2019-2020, uh, which was the uh, the last high season we had before COVID-19. Got a question from Alpha Bravo. Uh, this is all completely unscripted, um, by the way. I just get these questions randomly, and I read them sort of when you hear them. With the tax from money sent from outside Thailand, uh, it's always said 150000 is free but per week month or year ah okay so this is all part of this um foreign monies coming into thailand uh what um and what is the actual tax levels uh i posted a story on uh, phuket go i'm not sure if i can find that quickly let's see how i go uh, phuketgo.com I'm not sure if I'll be able to find the story quickly for you but it had the tax brackets published there and it's talking about um, tax brackets of the income over a year let's see if I can find this easily uh, of course I won't be able to find it easily but I'll do my best uh, what else am I looking for here? Uh, national news, be under national news. Uh, just talk amongst yourselves again. I'll see what I can do to find this, um, the, the tax brackets information. Here we go, Thailand taxing foreign sourced income this year. And the tax brackets, here we go. So the, uh, the tax brackets. So zero to 150,000 baht, uh, that's per year is exempt from any income tax. Then you've got more than 150,000 baht and up to 300,000 baht, there'll be a 5% tax rate. And it goes all the way down there to more than 5 million baht is subject to a 35% tax rate, which is the highest uh, tax rate here in Thailand. So uh, look, I'll put a link in the description to that particular article. And it goes through some of the, uh, the latest criteria or what we know about this uh, uh, foreign monies coming into Thailand. Now, as I've said to everybody, just cool your heels on worrying about this until we get a few tax uh, 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 well, test cases, uh, some interpretations, and we see exactly how this is going to affect foreigners living in Thailand for more than 180 days a year when the rubber hits the road. Now we may not know until the end of this tax year or indeed the end of 2024 exactly how it's going to be applied. Many people have tried to interpret the situation but it's not exactly, uh, they don't exactly know and I would say just uh, keep reading, keep watching uh, the, the, uh, the, the news channels and keep your eye on it, but uh, just be careful of people saying they know what's going to happen. So that uh, story, by the way, in Phuket-Go.com, the title of that is Thailand Taxing Foreign Sourced Income This Year, and it's uh, got all those tax rates published in it. So uh, the answer, I think, Alpha Bravo, is um, if you earn less than 150,000 baht in Thailand in a year, or you've got... Uh, less than 150,000 baht of taxable income coming into the country, I can't define exactly what that is, then uh, you wouldn't have to pay any uh, any tax. Uh, okay, hi from Nakon Patom. Gail, thank 
Gail. Thank you very, very much for your very kind support, Gail. I do appreciate that. And uh, not expected, nor is it solicited, but I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much for your, your kind support, Gail. And uh, best wishes to you. I've got three cameras staring at me here. Is it this camera? That's that camera there. Now I know. Scott D also uh, giving us some support this morning. And uh, he said, uh, my collection of six toy elephants, which were made from uh, my former shirts, uh, from the Seeds of Change charity auction are prominently displayed in our China cabin. So, uh, can I say to you, Scott, could you take a photo of them and send them to me? Uh, you know the email, and uh, I'll show that on the program next week. It's great to see uh, all those people who were involved in the charity auction for Seeds of Change last year. All the, uh, the, the little toy elephants were made from my old shirts. Uh, at my last place of, uh, of work. Tim's birthday is in three days on the 20th. Yes, it is, Alpha Bravo. And I'll be 29 years old. Uh, we've got another one. Hi, Tim. Great content. I enjoy the news you read daily. Jomtian Beach. Uh, something really getting very busy. Heaps of buses with Chinese tourists driving around. Infrastructure should be improved quickly, though. It's always been the problem that... Uh, it's sort of the chicken or the egg. It looks like the egg comes before the chicken in many parts of Thailand where they wait for the tourists to come, wait for the problems to develop, wait for the infrastructure to crumble. Uh, then they do something about it rather than the build it and they will come sort of concept. So uh, certainly that's been the case in Phuket ever since the 80s when tourists started coming to the island. Uh, even now, the, the infrastructure, the roads, the parking... None of that is uh, up to pace with the, the number of tourists. And that's been reflected in horrible traffic and slow traffic and just pure um, amounts of traffic on the island at the moment. I have to go there on Monday and I'm not looking forward to it. Really, I'm not looking forward to it. It's just, uh, it's just a hassle at the moment. Eugene asked the question, do you get any of your Thailand information from the famous Barry the Boss? I'm sorry, I don't know who Barry is. Apparently he's a boss, but I've never heard of him. But uh, I'm sure he's a wonderful person. Tell me more, I don't know Barry the Boss. Uh, happy birthday, Tim says, a good life. It's not my birthday until next Tuesday. But next Tuesday, I'm very happy to receive gifts. Probably... Um, not exceeding 100,000 baht. I mean, that would be overly generous. But if you spend less than 20,000 baht on a present, I, I might not really take you seriously. So, um, yeah, look, I, I'll be very happy if the day just goes uh, by and uh, I am still breathing at the end of it. I'll be very grateful. Tim will turn 29 for the 36th time. That's about right. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, feed the soy dogs, Tim says, Hans. Actually, they get pretty well fed from uh, the people that look after the cafe. There's four main dogs here. It's like most of the soy dogs around Thailand. They get semi-adopted by families and looked after. The biggest problem with both soy dogs and soy cats is that uh, the Buddhist thing, not necessarily a belief, is that they don't want to neuter the animals. And there are probably about half the vets here in Thailand won't actually uh, neuter the animals. So I remember with uh, my, my last cat, when she had her litter of kittens, uh, we took her down about a month after uh, she, oh, a bit later than that, probably about two months after she had the kittens uh, to the vet, and he said, sorry, you'll have to go to this vet down the road because I don't do neuters. So... It is a bit of an issue, so that's why there are, in some parts of Thailand, problems with soy dogs and soy cats. To some other news today, uh, and I'll get back to the comments very soon. Uh, it's disrupted my situation. Uh, talking about n digital nomad visas. Now, it seems to me that certainly during COVID and after COVID, the option of working away from your office or away from your home, uh, coupled with the fact that uh, things like laptops are getting so much faster and cheaper, uh, the availability of the internet pretty much anywhere now, 
that uh, digital nomads are a thing and they need to be catered for by various governments who, well, want to take advantage of their spending capacity. Because these digital nomads, they're not all people, they're not all hippies with an iPad uh, just sitting in a cafe for hours on a day using up their uh, internet space. Even though the internet now is so cheap, it's not really a thing. Uh, Some of them are quite sophisticated, wealthy people who legitimately want to stay in a foreign country and work for a while uh, and also tour around. Now, they have to eat, they have to rent properties, uh, they have to survive, live, they have to travel, so they're contributing to the general economy of the community. Uh, Any news on COD, death of tourists uh, on plane as... uh, I'll get to that, Les, in a moment. Got somebody just arriving for uh, for a quick coffee. Japan is finally releasing a digital nomad visa. Here's what you need to know. This is from BBC.com. Japan joins other Asian countries in releasing a digital nomad visa, but barriers to entry might be too high for most. That's certainly the case in Thailand. We'll get to that in just a moment. And the visa will be available to nationals of 49 countries, that includes the UK and the US. Once obtained, visa holders can legally live and work remotely from anywhere in the country for up to six months. But would-be digital nomads uh, have been quick to point out that like many new digital nomad visas, this one comes with some rather hefty requirements for eligibility. So they have to earn a minimum income of 10 million yen, that's around about 66 US, 66,000 US dollars, uh, it's about 20, uh, 2.2 million baht, that would be your annual income. You've also got to hold private health insurance and visa holders will not be allowed to obtain a residence card and the visa expires after six months and is not eligible for renewal. So like a lot of these digital visa, digital nomad visas, they're putting quite uh, high hoops to, uh, to jump through. And a 2023 survey by Carlos Greider estimates that digital nomads contribute nearly 800 billion That's US dollars to the global economy annually. A lot of that cash was flowing to places such as Portugal and its neighbouring nation of Spain. And uh, Brittany Loeffler, uh, the head of operations at Nomad Embassy, said, to be honest, it doesn't seem that Asia's introducing easy digital nomad visas. They're requiring high salaries compared to Europe's digital nomad visas or have strict requirements for the nature of their remote work. And uh, due to the affordable cost of living in Southeast Asia, reliable Wi-Fi and great weather, uh, places like Thailand uh, have released a digital nomad visa. It's called the Smart Visa here. And, uh, oh, sorry, the Long-Term Residence Visa, which is a different thing from the Smart Visa, my mistake. So it's called the Long-Term Resident Visa. And the community was very excited, but unfortunately, the eligibility requirements are quite strict and difficult to meet for the average digital nomad. And those requirements for Thailand include showing proof of income of at least 80,000 US dollars annually for the two years prior to the visa application date. And uh, through this special visa, the government hopes to bring in 1 million eligible foreigners over the next five years. Well, that was their expectation uh, when they introduced this nearly two years ago now. So they're expecting one million eligible foreigners over the next five years. Up to about a year ago, they'd only had less than 30,000 applicants. So the long-term residence visa (coughs) has so far been quite difficult to apply for. And it looks like it's got a fairly uh, low uh, application rate. So what do you think about these digital nomad visas or just making it easier for people to come and do things like legitimately work remotely? Now, this just isn't an excuse to get a sort of a uh, a pseudo tourist visa. So you just come in on the digital nomad visa and then you just uh, go and drink in Pattaya bars and uh, walk across the mountains. Uh, No, you'd actually have to come here and work. Uh, but I think there's a lot of people that would like to perhaps uh, sit, sit during the winter, for example, in Chicago, get out and spend three months, six months a year 
doing your work whilst looking out across the Andaman Sea. By the way, I know some great beach houses you could rent and do so. And they've all got a little office in there as well. So, um, I f it feels like post-COVID, telework is everywhere you look, says Liberal Ideas. The genie is out of the bottle, as it were. Uh, those requirements for the Japan Digital Nomad Visa are easier than Thailand's. Yes, uh, they, they are. The long-term residence visa, whilst some people see it as a, something that could be applied for by digital nomads, I don't think is really necessarily aimed at digital nomads. Uh, I think some of the smart visa um, categories might be better suited. What else have we got here? Uh, from John Hoddy. Hey, Tim, do you know if a Falang is allowed to open a motorcycle rental shop in Thailand? Uh, mm, uh, you'd have to have a Thai nominee. In other words, you'd have to have a Thai business partner. You wouldn't be able to open it uh, by yourself. And you'd probably only be able to open it if you were at a certain arm's length to the daily operation. Um, yeah. You might need the advice of uh, like a visa agent or a lawyer to give you some advice on that. My thinking is technically, uh, yes. In theory, uh, yeah. Just have to be careful with that one. As I said, the, the Thai nominee would probably have to be involved on a day-to-day -day basis with the running of the business. A question from Wilco. What does your regular local hangout, Chip Fair Le Le, translate to? Thank you. Tried to Google Translate without success. It means, uh, I think, something like enjoy a coffee by the sea. I think it's as simple as that. Um, if I see one of the owners, I'll, I'll grab them and uh, we'll find out. But I think it's enjoy coffee by the sea. And it looks like we've just had the arrival of two people on a motorbike who are going to enjoy coffee by the sea. And they've got a uh, motorbike that I haven't seen before, an ADV 160. A, a nice looking bike, actually. A scooter style. But uh, anyway, there you go. Always like to see the new bikes. Mungo has a question. Uh, any updates on any of the Andaman Railway proposals? Lines were proposed to connect Phuket to Hat Yai, Phuket to the Gulf via Suratani. Uh, well, nothing really. I haven't seen uh, any updates to the, uh, the proposal to add extra railways. We've never had a railway from Phuket, for example, or Panga to Suratani. Now, the railway line, uh, the north-south line, does run through Suratani and then down to Hat Yai. But we'd have to get the uh, the, ra the railways connected from Phuket to Suratani. Heard nothing about that. Uh, government's reaction to show they're on top of the trend to lo live anything in life from online. Okay, uh, let's go to our next story now. And uh, for two political parties, some headwinds ahead. EC reviews court ruling on the Move Forward Party. Now, the Constitutional Court ruled against the Move Forward Party recently, in this story from the Bangkok Post, and the Election Commission is reviewing the Constitutional Court's January 31 ruling on the Move Forward Party to assess whether the opposition party violated political party laws, which could possibly lead to its dissolution. That would be a big thing, given the huge support. Uh, over 30%, I think it was, at the uh, election last year. And the Bangkok Post also reporting the Pum Jai Thai teeters on the brink. Pum Jai Thai, the leader of the Pum Jai Thai party, is uh, Anatan Shavitakun. He was the past health minister, public health minister here in Thailand. Bikes have got some noisy brakes, and Pum Jai Thai, the third largest party in parliament, with 71 MPs, is in danger of being dissolved after the former Secretary General, who was also the Transport Minister, uh, was found guilty of concealing assets and using a nominee to hide ownership of a company that won government construction projects. And it said uh, that the former Transport Minister's use of a nominee to run his company, which won government construction projects worth billions, 
and the nominee donating money to Boom Jai Tai could lead to the party's dissolution. And if the party were to be dissolved, it would create a political tsunami as the executive committee would be banned from politics for 10 years and they are from influential political families so it would be a significant change including Anatin Shavitakun which at one stage was seen as a possible prime ministerial candidate that is never going to happen I can assure you of that but uh, yeah it looks like both Move Forward Party and the Pumjai Thai Party uh, have got um, some difficult times ahead the delivery trucks uh, go out of their way to break um, the world speed record along this stretch of uh, of road. You know, the delivery trucks closed in. Oh, the, the, they go twice the speed of the passenger vans, which also go twice the speed of all the rest of the traffic. So uh, another story, and this is uh, to do with the land bridge. Uh, from ThaiPBSWorld.com, House passes land bridge project feasibility report despite opposition. And the Southern and Move Forward uh, MPs unanimously voiced their opposition to the government's ambitious land bridge mega project, questioning the credibility of its feasibility study. And they remain unconvinced that the project is worth a staggering 1 trillion baht investment or its impact on the environment and lucrative tourism industry in the area. Okay, so we're talking about um, a, uh, a project which would link Ranong which is about four hours north of Phuket on the Andaman Sea. That's that Andaman Sea right there. Across the Isthmus of Kra, as it's called in Thailand, also known as the Malay Peninsula, to Chumpon on the other side. It's around about 90 kilometres. And they would build a port on both sides. Uh, so they have to build a port there and they have to build a port there. Then they've got to build uh, double lane highways in both directions train lines in both directions and uh, all the rest of the infrastructure how noisy can it be to water a cup of coffee they've got the helmets on so they can't hear themselves thinking <clears throat> so it's a, it's a really big project now they're saying it's going to cost uh, like a trillion baht it will be the most expensive infrastructure project ever done here in Thailand. why are they doing it well the idea being that the ships going from the west to the east or the east to the west from for example China to the Suez Canal they wouldn't have to go down through the South China Sea down uh, under Singapore or probably stopping off at Singapore then up through the Straits of Malacca which are getting increasingly busy and then on to uh, across the Indian Ocean so it would cut they estimate some two or three days off the shipping route. But of course, they've got to take the containers off at one side, move the containers across the Isthmus of Kra, and put them on a boat on the other side. A lot of people saying, well, why don't you just cut a canal? It would be a lot simpler, probably a lot cheaper, and the ships would just sail into the canal and out the other side. That would surely be a lot faster and would legitimately take time off uh, the current situation uh, of going down through Singapore. Tony Restall on you, Tony, and ch uh, chime in. The land bridge is a total disaster as the carriers, global shipping lines, would have to totally change their modus operandi. Crazy, says Tony. Uh, Tony's been a big supporter of a uh, canal um, through Thailand. Arnold Ziffel, would it be safe to ride a bicycle from Kamala to Thai Mlung? Uh, 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 look, um, you'd have to get through all that Phuket traffic. Once you're over the bridge, you've got a pretty open, straight, well-built two-lane, uh, four-lane highway all the way from Phuket to Thai Mlung. Thai Mlung. Thai Mlung. I can't say it. I don't know, laugh at me. I don't care. Turtle Beach. That's easier. So uh, yeah, yes, um, you can certainly do it. You've got to get through all that traffic in uh, Phuket, where the roads aren't quite as good. So uh, just be careful there. Uh, Thailand. Uh, going back to the digital nomad visa, George says Thailand digital nomad visa much more expensive than FX Portugal, EU country where after five years you can get permanent residence and a path to citizenship. Well, that's going to depend which country you come from. 
But yes, generally you're right. Um, who would pay for all that double handling? Well, I agree. It seems to me to be a lot of work. It sort of looks good on paper where you've sort of got the ship coming in and then you've got a line through Thailand and then off they go. But yeah, they've got to take the, all the containers off uh, and that ship then goes, what, back to wherever it came from? Not as if it's going to uh, continue or finish its journey. Then another ship is going to, an empty ship, is going to meet them on the other side and continue the journey to Japan, China, Philippines or wherever, wherever it's going. Uh, Hans Schellenberg, but then certain local superpowers would want to use the canal for their warships. Oh, God, do we have to get into that stuff? Um, not even going to uh, address that. Love that cafe. How much is breakfast there? Um, if I can get somebody's attention, I'll get the menu and I'll show you. Um, I'll just ask for you. Excuse me. Menu on the way. Just finished that story about the uh, the land bridge, and it says there are three questions which need to be answered by the government. Uh, first, whether there are more competitive options to the land bridge project. Thank you very much. Second, how the government will manage the impact of the project on the affected areas, and whether the project will ensure the utmost benefit for the country and its people. Well, legitimate questions. Here we go. So for breakfast, not many options. But uh, there we go. We've got the uh, American breakfast. We've got the, uh, oh, that's got egg, sausage, bacon, uh, toast, and a salad. Of course, you've got to have those ubiquitous little sausages in a Thai-style American breakfast. And then the Thai-style pan-fried eggs recommended. That's like a sort of a mince and uh, vegetables with a couple of eggs in a in a pan or fried up for you. I think it's a little bit more healthy. And then they also do a, uh, a sort of a breakfast sandwich, which has got uh, eggs and bacon and uh, salad and stuff in uh, two pieces of bread. So uh, there you go. That's the uh, the breakfast. And as you can see, there's plenty of other things. There's spaghetti and there's steaks and Thai food. So that's the, uh, the menu here. And it's also in Thai. At Chip Fair Lele. Which is at Turtle Beach. So there you go. Um, other things. Um, talking about the land bridge. See if uh, other people have got comments. Mr Chai 33. The project not only ports but lands for manufacturing. Uh, Singapore has only ports but land bridge will have factories. So, assumedly, there would be some sort of uh, yeah, infrastructure along that particular line from one coast to the other where there'd be a sort of a, a, a new uh, factory manufacturing zone that would take advantage of the ports on either side. Comment from Mungo. Hopefully, they start building the bridge linking the mainland to Koh Samui before they start on this mega land bridge project. I don't think that uh, bridge is going to happen from the... Uh, mainland to Kosamui. I, I know the residents would love it because they're sick of the horrendous prices they have to pay for airfares to Kosamui. Um, I just don't think there is the, the the cost of it is enormous, and uh, how they would pay it back. There would either have to be a toll, uh, or the people of Kosamui would have to pay for it somehow. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. But um, I think again. Uh, it's a good idea for a project. It's also a very big distance from, uh, what's it, the Tonsac Pier? Um, out to, uh, to Samui. Or even the, the closest distance between the coast and Samui. I mean, it's, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it's, I don't know, 20 kilometres or so. It's, it's quite a long way. Uh, Nongwa So, I told them get the submarine to blast a hole from one side to the other. Well, that'd work. <clears throat> no English breakfast, says Han Schillenberg. You don't see the word English breakfast used much here. When people refer to a foreigner breakfast, like a cooked breakfast, they're usually talking about, uh, they usually refer to it as an American breakfast. Now, there are places in uh, Pattaya and Phuket where you can get the traditional English breakfast, which would also include probably baked beans. But uh, 
not here. Gus says, my friend was picked up uh, by immigration police just for setting up the bikes in front of his wife's rental business, resolved by a donation to the Christmas fund. So, yeah, you've got to be careful. If you don't have a work permit, don't be seen working if you've got immigration police walking by. Stop what you're doing and just wave politely. The soy dogs like the sausages. <laughs> you're probably right. Uh, hi, Tim. Do you have any news about... Hua Hin, so-called international opening to flights. This from Philippe. Now, they've got a really nice airport at Hua Hin, and it's very, very underutilised. We keep on hearing um, mainly Air Asia are going to be starting flights from Hua Hin to, well, Malaysia or Hua Hin to somewhere else, and they, it never seems to happen. So I, I don't really know. I, I can't uh, help you with that. I haven't seen any news about it. But it's got a perfectly serviceable airport and I would have thought it would really help um, that uh, whole coast along if they could uh, put an airport in that area. So uh, good luck Philippe and I'll keep my eye out for any news about uh, airlines flying into Hua Hin. How much is a coffee? I think it's about 60 baht. Uh, a lot of Thais come in for their, um, I think the iced coffee is 40 baht and a, uh, an Americano or a cappuccino or a, um, a latte, I think, are 60 baht here. And quite good. I mean, I would call it a fairly smooth coffee they use here. But, uh, yeah, not, not a strong coffee. But, uh, yeah, I think the coffee here is pretty good. I'm not a coffee Nazi, though. I mean, I really, if it's brown and it's warm, I'm usually fairly happy. How does the land bridge work with bulk cargoes like crude oil, grain, or liquid LNG? It's, it's, it's something gas. Liquid, liquid something gas. Liquid, liquid mm, gas. I don't know. Very good question, though. I mean, you're not going to be able to take that off the ship, are you? So um, it would probably preclude those particular ships. Liquid natural gas? Uh, I'll have the muesli, says Bill Ellis. Well, not available here. But you can pop around to my place, Bill. I've always got some uh, muesli and some yogurt uh, ready. Uh, yummy. Love it. Thanks so much. Looks a very fair price. Yeah, the American breakfast is uh, 129 baht and the Thai breakfast is only 89 baht. Uh, almost 600, 111 likes. Hit that like button, says Alpha Bravo. Uh, just some, don't want to be missing any comments. And thank you for all the people who are commenting. I simply can't get to everybody, but I'm doing my best, seeing if I can see any other questions. Good evening from the Lazy Bee in Seattle. Go Airbus. Now, speaking about that, uh, I do have a story here about uh, that particular issue. Now, you would be aware that uh, if you want a single aisle plane, there are only, um, we're talking about something, the Boeing 737 from uh, the American manufacturer, or Airbus have got the A320 and the A321. And they're their single aisle, short hop, uh, domestic sort of carrier. Well, Airbus is now uh, going to try and extend the range of their Airbus a320, I think it's called the Airbus A320, A321 XLR Long Range or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, XLR, Extra Long Range. Now I think uh, they're going to be flying from later this year, but uh, and that will be able to do like hops across the Atlantic, for example, uh, much longer flights than the usual domestic sort of flights. But I mean, if you were going to buy one of those smaller domestic hop type planes you only had those two manufacturers to choose from understanding that Boeing's had some really big problems with its uh, max range of uh, the, the latest iteration of the Boeing 737 well, it looks like things might be shaking up a little bit and this is from bangkokpost.com China to show off homegrown airliner at the Singapore air show you can see that picture there it really looks like any of the other of the uh, short hop planes oh. <clears throat> the biennial show will also feature the first trip outside chinese territory for china's first homegrown passenger jet comax narrowbody c919 
many inside the industry caution that only four 919s are in service in China. The plane's only certified by Chinese regulators at the moment and the C919 relies on international supply chains. Uh, the engines, for example, I think are obviously... Can I see the manufacturer of the engines? Have a close look. I can't really see the, uh, the logo there. But yeah, the, the engines are from overseas, for example. But uh, these planes, they've only been launched, I think, for about six months. And they, the, the Chinese have got very strict regulations about uh, air safety and airworthiness certificates and things like that. So I think these planes will um, probably do well in China, which has got a, the, probably the fastest growing aviation industry in the world. So can they sell these to European or American plane makers? Imagine it'd be a pretty brave decision for an American uh, <coughs> airline at the moment to buy a Chinese aircraft. But if Boeing continues to have the problems with its uh, MAX series of jets, then, well, who knows what's going to happen? It's the, whoops, what happened? Whoop, there we go. It's the first major international industry event since last month's blowout of a door plug on a 737 MAX 9 pushed Boeing into its second safety crisis in five years and sent images of, fu of a fuselage with a gaping hole whizzing across the globe. And six air forces will stage flying demonstrations, including the US, India and South Korea. I'd like to go to the Singapore Air Show. Don't have time, so I won't be going there anytime soon. Back to your comments. And uh, the tax rate, says John Paul Reaver, will depend upon if the income from taxable or non-taxable income, pension or social security. Again, uh, it's really difficult to make any comments about this because every single person's tax situation is going to be uh, a completely different situation from everybody else's. So a one-size-fits-all answer to any of this uh, foreign income coming into Thailand is just not going to wash until we get a few cases uh, under the belt and we can see exactly how different cases, including things like pensions, are being treated. And depending on which country you come from, depending on the tax treaties with those countries, there are so many variables, it's almost impossible to come out with a one-size-fits-all comment. Um, Hans Schellenberg says Airbus just announced they're working on a hydrogen powered plane. Boeing will no doubt try to catch up by strapping hydrogen tanks to a 737. Paulie D says in Patia next week, for those currently there, how is the air quality? Oh, do you want to see the air quality in Patia? That's pretty easy to find. Let me go to a uh, web page and I'll type in IQ Air. You ask, I'll find it for you. Let's go to the map. Uh, and Bangkok is not in the top 10 worst air quality places today. We'll just zoom out a little bit there, maybe a little bit more. And we can see, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty nasty around central Thailand there, less so in Bangkok today. And we can see mostly orange and yellow spots, really anything orange or red. Well, that dark pink is uh, when it's starting to get pretty nasty. But even orange and yellow, well, you certainly can see the haze in the air. So, Pati, you're not doing too bad this morning. Uh, you, you're down to yellow. Uh, down in the south of Thailand, always you're going to see more of the, uh, the green spots. Uh, and as you move further north in Thailand, it gets... I find this always very difficult to uh, operate. But you can see up in north, uh, northern Thailand... Uh, probably worse than Bangkok today with red and orange um, uh, measurements. That's from IQ Air. You can check it yourself, iqair.com. And Liberal Ideas says, uh, it feels like post-COVID telework every... Oh, well, I think I've already done that one. Uh, Wellness with John says, those requirements for the Japanese digital nomad visa are easier than Thailand. I've done that as well. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going through some of the old messages. Uh, where's those birthday party horns? I'm on the LTR visa, best visa in Thailand. That's the long-term residence visa. Uh, and well done to you, David, if you have the uh, means. 
and the opportunity and you pass the qualifications, yes, it's probably the best visa you can get for long-term retirees uh, without having to go to the elite visa. So it's a bit of an alternative to the elite visa, but uh, it's a bit harder to apply for and you've got to prove all those uh, qualifications. Um, Tekken said, I bought the 20-year elite visa before they increased the prices. I love it, says Tekken. So you're here for 20 years and... um, yeah, pretty much uh, don't have to worry about anything for 20 years. Although under an elite visa, you still can't work. Bikers, says Reg Dunlop. Geez, they're annoying. Oh, they don't particularly bother me. They're just here to have a coffee. They've cycled all the way here. They probably deserve at least a coffee. Hi, Tim. It means sip coffee by the sea. How, what, high, when, where. So chip fair le le means sip coffee by the sea. Thank you very much for that. Uh, just uh, going through. I love that cafe. How much is a breakfast there? We've done that. I'm sorry, I've uh, scrolled a bit too far back. A question with a question mark from Tony Fossey. Do you think any other airlines will ever be allowed to fly into Kosamui? Bangkok Airways built the airport on Kosamui. At a time when nobody else would and the government wouldn't, now they're reaping the benefits uh, by raping passengers with their ridiculous, exorbitant, extortionate prices. So the cheapest flight, I think, from, say, Bangkok to Koh Samui is going to be about 5,000 baht. But uh, other parts of Thailand, when you can get the cheap, uh, cheap fares, are going to be, well, a third or a quarter of that sort of price for doing the same sort of distance. Now, I do believe there are a couple of airlines uh, flying into Kostamui International. Uh, Don't hold me to this, but I think Singapore Airlines is one of them. And I think there might be a German charter airline flying in there as well. Don't hold me to that. But uh, I think there are a couple of international airlines, but they're going to be paying for, uh, for the pleasure. And, of course, only a fairly small island and a small market. But, uh, yeah, Kosamui's always had this sort of tyranny of distance problem with the infrastructure on getting in onto the island. It's either a uh, one-and-a-half-hour ferry trip, a long swim, or you take uh, Bangkok Airways from Bangkok, nowhere else, onto the island. Um, okay, two large container ships with 15,000 containers each. How many trucks? How long trains for? And reenact this uh, better with the canal. Says Tor Pedersen. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a whole lot of stuff that hasn't been discussed in relation to this uh, land bridge at the moment. And if anybody actually sat down and talked about the logistics, I don't know why the government is so hell-bent on pushing this forward. It just seems to have so many question marks. And every time you ask a question, the the answers seem to be totally inadequate when compared to a canal or doing nothing at all. A question, how much is a bottle of Leo there? I don't think they serve alcohol. So um, it's a coffee or a water or a shake or some other flavoured milk or shake drink, uh, like a fruit shake, passion fruit, mango, but uh, no alcohol. You seem possessed by beer. Uh, You were saying a bit earlier that you're going to be having a beer while you're watching the program at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, He asked for price. This you totally ignored, says, buy you Tom on the loose again. I think I'm being um, berated. Uh, Landbridge has oil pipelines to move oil feeder ships, but uh, it not focus on huge cargoes with long distances. Okay, so if they're going to have an oil pipeline from one side of Thailand to the other, that's a whole different ball game and uh, starts to raise a lot of safety concerns and, well, other concerns as well. Um, Hi, Tim. Oh, that passed me by. Got to be careful scrolling here. Uh, Reg Dunlop says, didn't Boeing announce their suspending production of the 737-9 and 737-10s because of their F-ups? I think you can say fuck-ups. 
Um, I don't know. I think the 737-10 and the 737-7 are going, uh, haven't been approved yet, and I think approvals for those are a long, long, long way away, given the problems they've been having. So I think generally um, it's interesting that the public who never really used to take a lot of interest in particular planes or problems with uh, with, with flights. Um, I, th I think now people are talking about safety a lot more than they used to, especially when we seem to get these almost daily videos of, uh, of people behaving badly on planes, trying to open doors, uh, going on rants and raves, uh, different Karens uh, standing up for their rights on planes. So, yeah, flying has become a little bit more vexatious than it was in the past. A lot of people talking a lot more about safety than they used to. So I think uh, there's a real spotlight on Boeing, and it's had a watershed in its um, long and illustrious career of making planes. Now, both Airbus and Boeing have got orders into the 2030s. So um, there's still plenty of demand for new planes, but uh, now with Airbus taking the lead in, um, in providing planes for the world, just don't know if Boeing's ever going to be able to catch up, uh, given what's happened over the last five years with uh, the problems, not only with the 737, but some of their other models as well. Humphrey Peake, speaking of planes, says Chinese plane built with Boeing and Airbus parts. Partly, yes, partly, and that's uh, been acknowledged. Uh, but uh, the same with um, all these plane manufacturers. They all have uh, people from different parts of the world. The supply chain is international. Uh, in Boeing's case, they don't make all the parts at Renton. Uh, and in Airbus's case, they don't make all the parts in Toulouse in France. Frank Hagen says, uh, Hi Tim, you did a story on Thailand's soft power in entertainment, especially the BL series. Now, the article was a great read. Thank you. Uh, yeah, th these boy love dramas. Uh, they're sort of... Oh, I'm not sure how you describe them. I only saw a bit of one. Um, th I think that they would particularly um, be watched by adolescents. And they're all sort of about these uh, sort of semi-relationships, uh, pseudo-homosexual relationships between young men. And they seem to be very, very popular on Thai TV at the moment. And if you turn on to soap operas in Thailand, you're more likely to see one of these boy love dramas than any other sort of soap opera at the moment. Uh, and same in South Korea. So not exactly sure why they've uh, become so um, prevalent here in Thailand, uh, but they are very popular. And uh, we've got another super chat uh, from Scott D. Scott! You've already given us a super chat today, which was appreciated. Uh, although your birthday is in several days, thank you, Scott. Um, happy birthday. Use this donation for a nice lunch. My family and I will be staying at the beach houses this July. My kids will love building sand castles on the beach. Uh, interesting, um, I've actually got a two-month booking already for one of the beach houses uh, during this wet season. Mostly, uh, I'm very reluctant to do a, a long um, uh, a booking like that. Most of them are short-term bookings, two, three, four days, maybe up to a week. But uh, thank you very much, Scott D, for that. Appreciated. And uh, I will indeed um, go and enjoy a lunch. In fact, I know exactly where I'm going to go, called Sea Light. I want to go back there and try another meal. Just uh, 10 minutes south of here. We'll make sure we take your family there when you get here. Thank you very much, Scott, for your kind birthday wishes and your generosity. Rachel Masters has a comment. Maybe it's time to go back to flying in a hot air balloon. As long as the wind's blowing where you want to go, I think that's a great idea. I've been in a hot air balloon twice in my life. Enjoyed it both, uh, but yeah, both times very much. Only problem with hot air balloons is the landing is usually a little bit rough. They tell you it's going to be rough and they tell you what to do while you're landing. But nonetheless, it's uh, always fairly agricultural, let's say. Uh, is Turtle Beach expensive, Tim, says M. Maranta. Well, no. I mean, it's a little Thai town, 20 minutes north of Phuket. You could be anywhere in Thailand. Um, it's not a touristy area by any means. So if you go to these little cafes and little restaurants, 
they're usually at uh, sort of Thai prices. <clears throat> some a bit more expensive than others, but certainly nowhere near the sort of prices you might pay in some of the tourist zones around Thailand. So uh, no, it's not particularly uh, expensive at all. Accommodation here, well, we are about uh, 20 minutes north driving-wise from a place called Natai Beach, which is just over the bridge after Phuket. Now, if you want to rent a beach house there for uh, in Natai Beach, you might be paying 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 baht a night. But here on Turtle Beach, if you want to rent a beach house, uh, it's going to cost you about three or 4,000 baht a night. So, yeah, I mean, that's just one um, barometer. There's many, many others. YouTubers are out of control with such bad behaviour in many ways, says Lance Link. I'm reading that out of context. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about in regards. Who has been misbehaving? I need to know. David Connolly says, I'm living in Koh Samui. This is the gentleman who's got the 20-year elite visa. You can fly here directly from KL, Singapore, Bangkok and Phuket. Expensive, yes. Okay, so they were doing flights from Phuket to Koh Samui. Uh, in those um, overhead, uh, the, the AFR 72s, I can't remember, they're the sort of um, two-seat, two-seat uh, wing over the fuselage planes with the propellers, nice little planes, but it takes around about, I don't know, an hour to fly there, and uh, yeah, but a very expensive, that trip will cost you more than flying to, say, Singapore or uh, Mumbai, it'd be cheaper than that little jump across uh, the Isthmus of Kra. Um, R. Dewsbury, speaking of uh, the fares, Bangkok Air's flyer bonus air mile scheme need to fly round trips to Samui every week. That's about 10,000 baht round fare for a year to get enough points to pay for one discount flight. Yeah, most of those frequent flyer schemes are a bit of a rip-off. And if you fall for them, Good for you. Uh, today, no alcohol sale in Thailand. Whoa, I was unaware of that. It's a, one of the Buddhist holidays. I haven't got my calendar in front of me. Um, is it a Buddhist holiday today? Just asking Kun Sert. Is it a Buddhist holiday today? Matcha Butcha Day or... Okay, he has no idea. Drives customers uh, from the airport back to the beach houses from time to time. We're getting ready to pick up a customer from the beach house, take them back to the airport today at 11. But I uh, don't think he's a particularly devout Buddhist. Um, okay, what else we got here? Comment, maybe it's time to go back to flying in a hot air balloon. We've already done that one. Thank you, Scott D. Much appreciated. Daryl McGee coming through again. Daryl, thank you very, very much <coughs> for your kind support. I uh, really appreciate uh, your support and uh, hopefully you're having a good day in Australia. We look forward to your next visit to Thailand. And uh, James Garner, also uh, thank you very much. A thumbs up from James Garner and uh, uh, living in the US. Which part of the US are you from, James? Thanks for your support and great to have you online this morning. I hate missing uh, these super chats and I don't ever want to. Uh, every week for a whole year. Mm, we might have many ties in Norway and them all full rights, same, same. Uh, so Tom is saying that uh, ties going to live in Norway have got all the full rights of a resident of a person in Norway. Um, so I suppose access to healthcare and things like that you're talking about. Uh, I'm not sure what that comment is in relation to, but thank you very much. Uh, Ombrea Brazilian passenger plane. Yes, uh, Ombrea makes some great planes, but not particularly large planes. And I think, uh, for example, they... I can't remember if it was Ombrea or Bom Bombardia who were bought out by Airbus with their A220. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm not an expert in aviation. I just have a lingering interest. But uh, they're small players when compared to Boeing and, uh, and Airbus. Okay, just going to the recent comments. We'll do another four or five and then we'll say goodbye. Much Makabucha Day is next weekend, says Mungo. 
Yeah, I I would have done a story about a Thai holiday if I'd known about it. Um, Yeah, I don't think today is a no alcohol day. Um, But uh, apologies if I'm wrong. If you get arrested for drinking alcohol and it is indeed a no alcohol day, say that you saw it on uh, TNT. Is the Mercedes back on the road? Yes, the Mercedes is back on the road and sitting in my carport. It's going back to Phuket uh, on Monday to get a little bit of work done. But uh, yeah, running well. Drove it up here the other day and running like a cat purring. Sounded great. Uh, James Garner, loved you in the Rockford Files, says GD. Yes. Much a butcher day. Everybody's now telling us that it's next Saturday. I think the Thai holiday is next Saturday. Yeah, it looks like uh, much a butcher day, which is one of the five major Buddhist holidays each year. Uh, it's going to be next week. Um, Bombardier designed the A220 and sold it to Airbus. Thanks for him. Uh, Bombardier, sorry. Thanks, uh, Ray. Appreciate that. February the 24th will be a no alcohol day. That means that you can't usually buy alcohol at a 7-Eleven and the bars would usually be closed until midnight on those days. Uh, Hi, I know Songkran is for three weeks, but uh, is all the water throwing for three weeks? Eric, I'm absolutely sure that the the water throwing won't be going on for three weeks. Places like Chiang Mai and Pattaya uh, seem to do the water throwing over, well, more than one day, maybe into two, three, four days. But uh, no, mostly it's one, maybe pushing two days in most areas of Thailand. Uh, Pat Tai said, Tim's birthday is on the 20th of February. Yes, thank you for reminding me. I'll be hitting a minor milestone. We'll see what happens. Uh, Today is a Buddha day, says Mr. Ben's world, but it's not a big Buddha day. And Philip Damani says, bye Tim, got to go. Looking forward to the Grumpy Old Men and your weekly update. Ah, tomorrow's Grumpy Old Men will be a live program. So put that on your calendar if you'd like to join Steve and I tomorrow at, um, I think it'll be 8 a.m. We'll be doing Grumpy Old Men live. So uh, we'll be able to take your comments and uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. But I can't fit in a recording today given the amount of work that I have at the moment. So uh, live Grumpy Old Men tomorrow from 8 a.m. Thai time in the morning. And a couple more comments and we'll say goodbye from Sharon. Uh, Before you go, wishing you a happy birthday for Tuesday. Ooh, live grumpies, woohoo. Water throwing has a three-day rule too, says Arnold Ziffel. There's no particular rule on the water throwing. Just in places in Pattaya, I know it goes on for four or five days. They really milk it. Up in Chiang Mai, I know it's also very popular and it goes on for more than one day. But uh, traditionally in Thailand, it would only happen on one day and that would be the gentle pouring of water onto a Buddha image or onto from a a younger to an older person. It's a very sort of uh, pared down and low key and gentle, but it's been ramped up in some locations. to be something that's got, well, I think in some cases, completely out of control, but a lot of people do like coming to Thailand. Parts of Bangkok are just a sea of water guns and uh, people in various stages of undress having a rollicking good time. Main water fight for Songkran only from the 11th to the 15th of April in main cities. Uh, Look, I'd say pretty much in most parts of Thailand, Uh, Songkran is only on April the 13th, which is Songkran Day every year, the start of the Thai New Year. But yes, it will go on for maybe a day before and a few days after in some locations. Uh, What visa are you on, Tim? A working visa, I assume. That's correct. Uh, was, Was here. A B visa, I think they call it, with a work permit. Eileen. Oh, my God. Eileen, thank you very much. Uh, Humbled uh, by your generosity and your good wishes for a birthday coming up. Um, Given the birthday I'm hitting, 65, uh, I think I know what I'll be spending the money on. 
I need more than uh, that for that particular operation. But, oh, well, there you go. The good thing as you get older is the eyesight gets worse as well, so you sort of can't see the damage that nature is doing to you. Eileen, thank you very, very much. Uh, it's appreciated, and uh, good luck to you for the rest of your weekend. Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, Tim, as an FYI, the audience for BL series are straight female, 16 to 40. Go figure. Yeah, look, at uh, it's one of those things. Uh, I think you're right. Most of those BL series uh, do attract the younger females who sort of get some sort of... Well, they see these young men attracted to each other and they think, oh, I think I can convert them or something like that. I don't know what's going on. And they usually pick, uh, you know, young, attractive uh, teenage gentlemen um, for those particular series. And I think the girls like looking at them too. So uh, I don't know much about it, but that seems to be a bit of a thing in Thai soap operas at the moment. And Franco says, getting my extended visa done on your birthday. Hope your day goes well and my visa. Well, my birthday wishes are extended to you, Franco. I hope for the, hopefully your visa extension goes well. And most people don't have problems with their visas here, as long as they you know, basically fit the qualifications. Um, yeah, and you've got a little bit of patience. The immigration officers these days are usually doing their best to try and uh, get visas and things processed as soon as they, they can. But the visa officers, especially this time of the year, a lot of people coming in for just a, like a tourist visa extension, they're really busy at the moment. The sooner they get a, lo a lot of this online, the better. So um, thanks today. Um, I'm sorry about the, the, the soft start. I might delete that uh, a bit later. Sorry for the low volume, but um, hopefully you got a little bit of information, maybe a few giggles during the program. I got to as many uh, comments as I could today. And uh, yeah, I've got a really, really busy weekend. And I think on Monday I'll be full of fumes from the epoxy paint on the floor, so anything could happen. Live grumpy old men tomorrow with Mr. Mr. Ross. That's going to be at 8 a.m. Steve will be on his best behaviour, won't you, Steve? And we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for joining us today, and thank you very much for all those super chats. Much appreciated, and we'll see you later.